All right, we're back. It's the fight before Christmas, and I want to give a big thank you to our sponsors of this tournament before we get too far into it. Uh, Chaser Gaming has been our, our only channel sponsor for quite some time. They definitely deserve some love. All their shares are currently out of stock because you guys have been awesome and buying the heck out of them, but I think they're getting new shipments sometime around Christmas time. Uh, if you check out their website, chairsforgaming.com or chairsforgaming.ca, you will, of course, find DX Racers. If you want to get $20 off of your purchase, make sure to use promo code BASETRADETV and tell them Rifkin sent you. Uh, of course, the other guys, CM Storm, have provided us some fabulous prizes for you, the viewers, to win. Uh, we have a CM Storm Recon mouse to give away during the finals. That'll be raffled off in chat. That's, of course, going to use your partouts that you've been earning while watching the channel to uh, buy a pur uh, purchase a couple raffle tickets. We got some Hearthstone gift packs, a Base Ray TV t shirt, and uh, Pharaoh has actually donated a shirt for us to give away, too, which we will save to talk about later. But for now, spawning here in the top right corner of the map on Catalina, it's going to be Millennium's Red Protoss Lilibo. In the middle left as uh, the blue Zerg hits solar. Of course, repping that Samsung Galaxy quite well. Uh, one of the things I'm a little curious about, though, is we do see two very similar all-ins, different times and different timings, which are, I think, a big influence, but two very similar all-ins at Little Bow. I kind of joked after that first game. I said, man, this guy rolls out of bed and pulls an all-in, beats one of the best Koreans in the world. Like, what a boss! But, I mean, do you think that's a negative thing or, or a positive thing for him? I mean... One win, one loss. Oh, uh, hmm. Hmm, I don't know. I feel like when I watch Solar play, uh, and this is just through games we cast as well as games we watch of him, it's it's one of those things where he'll get caught off guard once, but almost never again. Yeah, so I, I wanted to say that as well. Yeah. Like Lilbo can't depend on doing an all in every single game. Ooh. I would hope that it isn't his plan, but it might be. Yeah, I want to stress, just in case you guys are seeing Lilbo for the first time, too. First off, shame. He's one of the best for us players in Europe. You should definitely see more of him. Uh, he's played in previous tournaments we've had, too. And While we've seen two all-ins so far, it's definitely not all he knows how to do. This is not like a player like, uh, say, Arthur, where you kind of know what he's going to be doing before he even starts because he's only playing one way. Uh, Lilbo's capable of many different things, and uh, I think what would be really cool is if we did see some Stargate play out of him. But mm. at the same time, going back to the point of all-ins, this is the North American server. It's not exactly something, even of a small amount of latency. You don't want to have to micro phoenixes through that. Yeah, that's true. <clears throat> and we do have a you know that probe hiding there. Yeah. I would say that it's for a scout, but it's already scouted like you know three base, three hatcheries, which is the most he's probably gonna ever scout. The chances of getting back in the main from here should be low. I mean, it should be like lings out and queens, of course. But I, I you know it's a perfect position for a proxy pylon right near that third. I think, yeah, it's kind of when, um, whenever we see Huck play, some of the best Protoss players are the ones that leave that probe hidden for 20 minutes. Don't touch it, don't get antsy, don't try and do something cheeky with it, and use it precisely when you need it. So, we'll see if he actually goes through that mentality or if he's just going to slap down some pylons right now, because uh, that's three gateways and Chrono Boost being dumped into a cyber core. <laughs> or four gateways, yeah. sorry. Yeah. Well, you know what you meant. Uh, the probe, I guess, is going to make the pylon out here. Uh, I mean,. I wouldn't like the high ground better, I think. Yeah, you would think so, but like, there's no hydras. The queens are going to get over here. Uh, I guess roaches shoot far, too. I, I, the point is, I don't think there's going to be roaches on top of the uh, the high ground unless things go really wrong for Lobo. Does he see this? Uh, okay, he sees it. Yes, yeah. So that's a pretty good scout. I mean, you know, if they're placing on a proxy pylon, at least in your face like that, they're going to attack. If it was, like, outlying somewhere else, eh, maybe you should check before that. But the Overlord obviously sees three gateways to the front. Do the math. That's a four gateway attack. This would actually be the coolest fake out if you could. Uh, you know, you know your opponent's gonna see those three gateways in the front no matter what. The Overlord's always there. You just put the pylon down, hoping to force like an overreaction, but really you macro up behind it. However, that's not what Little was doing, and it's kind of had my fingers crossed. But this is not something that's an all-in. Four gateways, two bases. I mean, this is something he can recall relatively easily. Uh, keeping mm. those sentries alive is gonna be priority number one. Yeah, and they're only slow lanes. Enough slow lings will kill a anything, I suppose. But you know, they they aren't that great against zealots. Just lings in general, man. They don't have any upgrades into zealots, but still, zealots, you know, the back against the wall are gonna make solar make like way like so many lings that that in itself is already worth the pressure. Now he's not stopping, you know, the attack. He's actually just continuing to warp in as many zealots as possible. So he's really looking to chew through these lings and do something. 
I mean, Zealots without plus one are still pretty darn effective if you got enough of them. It's only going to take a couple of force fields to really lock this down, but uh, Solar does have a lot of legs. I mean, this is not a small amount you can underestimate. Well, he gets sort of on top of a ramp. Good force fields. Gets the queen. And the motion core is now safe. I don't like these Zealots getting overexposed or these sentries, but I did like the position of the initial fight. Uh, but more force fields coming down. He's going to hold for now. Zealots do get surrounded. That's when this starts becoming problematic. Uh, with their backs not surrounded by Lings, this is the best case scenario. Recall definitely in order. He's got to get these sentries out alive. Priority number one, as stated before, and he will fall back. Meanwhile, we didn't realize it, but a couple of links managed to slip through to Solar's natural. Or sorry, to Littlebo's natural. He got about six probe kills off of this, which is really uh, technically better than what Littlebo did. <laughs> yeah. Again, Littlebo did force out all of these links. I mean, Solar is on even drones, but he's starting to drone now. Littlebo... I, I gotta imagine that's like... Oh, oh this was that sucks. Like, that's why he continued to warp in Zealots, because he thought, like, okay, I'll just, you know, trade, you know, kind of nicely with all of these Lings, uh, which he, you know, actually got the worst trade for it. Because, like, otherwise, you have seen Protoss kind of fake out. The, like, they'll go for the four gate, but they'll only warp in, like, four Zealots and three sentries, and they'll have that recall ready to go, like, immediately. And behind that, they automatically start probing up again and getting gases. He actually dedicated a lot to that attack. And he's following up with the seven gate, so maybe that makes more sense. A uh, pressure into all in build. I mean, it seems silly to say, but you gotta consider even though he didn't come out of the cost effective, keeping those three sentries alive is the biggest deal in the world. Because now he's gonna be able to warp in less sentries and less priority on those sentries. He's still probably gonna need more like six or seven before really pushing out here. Uh, although, mm, he's not warping more sentries. With seven gateways, you don't like try to expand, right? Well, it's, but, it's off of one gate, oh, one gas. <laughs> I guess, so, yeah. He doesn't have a lot of sentries to use. I didn't even notice like that, that the... The gas can't was so a, abysmal. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I just figured he was opening nothing but zealots because zealots were good against links. But it, it is yeah. really abysmal, and that means, like, that was even more dedicated attack than I thought it was. So he's actually, like, in a worse position. Uh, Solar would be pretty bad if he did only have links, but he is getting roaches right now. He threw down some spines as well, so not yeah. totally out of the game. Really nice. I kind of feel this last ditch effort a little bit though, it's just, it's not got the army supply. If you had like another 12 zealots, you're like, okay, even the roaches aren't going to stand a chance in this. But without the force fields and without the zealots, there's just, I feel, very little chance of success here. Oh, the lanes are still attacking on the other side. They really want to choose these gateways and they're going to get like two, they might even get all three at the front. Wow. That doesn't matter anyways, this little bow is getting chopped to pieces here. The spine crawlers do go down, but the roaches are all still alive. All right, Solar takes the lead in the series now, one or two to one. But as it is the first best of five, we're still uh, waiting to see. What